Welcome to Azure Data Explorer Short. I'm Vincent with the Azure Data Explorer team. Today we look at QSTO Query Language or KQL, and we're going to do that by experimenting with the language in the Query Web UI. Every QSTO Query starts with a data source, in this case, a table. You can see with the IntelliSense, I can see the tables available. Here I'm going to do a simple count, and a query returns me the number of rows. So what I've done is starting with a table name and then piping an operator, in this case, the count operator. And this basically is the format for Custo query. Data source, piping, different operators. So let's try to look at the table. And for that, I would like to look at the first 10 rows. This is the equivalent of doing a select top 10 in SQL. An alias for a limit would be take. It is also a top operator, but it's used to do top by and then column names, for instance, in time. And this is really the equivalent of doing an order by a column, in this case, end time, and taking a limit of 10. And we can see that is the same result. So it's really a short end for an order by and a limit. Now, something quite frequent, we'll want to just look at some columns. So we'll do a projection, the top 10, and we have the our columns. In Custo, we always want to limit the result because typically we have very large tables and we don't want to overload the client with the result set. We could add another operator. For instance, we could have a filter, filtering by state equal Florida, and receive only the Florida. Something else we do in Custo very often is to augment or create a column on the fly during a query. So for instance, I could create a column called V, which would be a concatenation of two columns with an ID and a state, for instance. This is one way we could transform the data, maybe aggregating columns together. A very common way to look at a data set is to distinct value for a column. So of course, do an order by afterwards to get them in alphabetic order. Now let's look at aggregation. For that, we use the summarize operator. So in this case, I want to count the number of rows, but I'll go by state. What are the number of events in this storm events table per state? And I'll order by state. See, by default, it's descending if I want it ascending. We can see the column for the count is count underscore. That's the default name. If I want to give it a name, I just put it here. And we can keep going. For instance, I could filter out cardinality where I just want to have the even cardinality. So modulo 2 equal equals 0. And then I only have even cardinality. And I could keep going. I could summarize by sum and get the total of cardinality given that the cardinality was even. And this is a good query to compare with the SQL equivalent to compare the two query language. And we can do that because Custo understands SQL for compatibility with the larger ecosystem. So for instance, I could do a select top 10 from storm events and get this going. So if we translate the previous query, this query, this would be the equivalent and we would return the same result. Now, if we compare the two queries, we can notice very quickly that this one is harder to read. It's not only the number of characters or number of lines, it's the way that the query is written, that we have a lot of inner queries and it's basically inside out. So we start in the middle. This is where we start. We start from the table here in the middle and then we take the result of that query. We do something else with it and we take the result of this and do something else with it. Compare that with a Custo query. We start with the table, then we apply operators. It is akin to a story that we're telling and every line has a part in the story. This is why we say that Custo query language as a data flow model behind it because it's basically a sequence of transformation. Now let's continue with Custo queries. Let me paste one real quick. So here what we do, we take the storm events, we compute the number of events and the average of those events per state. Then we order by this average. We filter those aggregates to take only the one bigger than 1800s and we project only the state and the event count column. And finally, we render this as a column chart. So this is something unique to Custo where we can prompt the editor to display a certain chart. And this makes us very productive when we want to explore the data. And there are multiple type of charts, by the way. So it's something to explore. So we looked at simple queries. We looked at aggregation or we looked at charts, but now we're gonna look at joins. So joining multiple tables. Let me 
paste that. Here, what we do, we take the storm events table, filter it with only event type of lightning. Again, we take the storm events table, we filter it by avalanche, and we join it on state. So we want to know which states have both an avalanche and a lightning event, at least one. Now this works, but there's a better way to write that query that highlights another feature of Crystal Query, it's variables. What I could do is create another a variable, a lightning storm, and I would basically store a query in there. And I could do the same thing with avalanche. And then I can join my two tables. And I would get the same result. But now the query is much easier to read. I use variables. So it's a way to clarifying the way the query is written. At the end of the day, it's executed the same way. The query optimizer will generate the same query plan, but it's easier for you to read. I understand that this was a very quick intro to the KQL query language, although it's very quick to learn as well. It's usually a matter of a few hours, but it prompts the question, why the Cousteau query language? Why didn't we use SQL? And it's a good question because learning a language is an investment. So we've seen that Cousteau is a data flow model. The language is very efficient and more efficient than SQL to do transformation of data. And it's something we do often in the core scenarios of Azure Data Explorer. We take raw data and we transform it to extract insights from it. It makes it very readable as well, since each line is an operator and each operator stands by itself and makes it easy to debug as well. So the query doesn't give us the result that we expect. We can just come in out a couple of lines, walk back to find the error. And finally, time series analytics, user analytics, advanced analytics, they all require a lot of transformation to get from the raw data to a form where we extract insight. So the Custo language was optimized to deal with those scenarios. As mentioned, this was a very quick introduction. We wanted to leave you with a couple of resources to learn more. All the URLs are available in the video description. First, the tutorial available on this link. What you've seen in this video is largely inspired by that tutorial. KQL, quick reference. SQL to Custo cheat sheet to allow you to pass from one language to the other easily. Best practices once you get to more completed queries and you want to get performance out of your queries. If you're interested to learn more, there are three Pluralsight courses. And finally, my colleagues did a longer video, about 40 minutes, Olga in Slavic, that goes much deeper into the Custo language. Any questions or comments, please leave them down below. And you can follow us on those different social media platforms. And until next time.